this from Justin Edinburgh. Good ball there for Everson, and he's got the pace to get in ahead of Walsh and keep going. And Keller, and it's a goal! Would you believe it? In stoppage time, Alan Nielsen has scored and maybe secured the Worthington Cup for Tottenham Hotspur. What a time to pick to produce your most important moment of the match. It's a lovely surging run, really drives it. Steve Walsh really goes at him. He's no real support, it's going to cross the goal. And there's Alan Nielsen. We talk about his drive into the box and so late in the game, even with 10 men, Nielsen's desire to get in there, just in the hope that something would happen. And this time, George, you can go up. It is in. Ferdinand in the corner, and that's where he'll want to keep the ball. He won't care where he goes. He's gone out for a goal kick. And maybe when the ball's in flight here, the referee will choose that moment to blow the final whistle. Martin O'Neill waving everyone upfield. That's it. It's all over. The 1999 Worthington Cup final has ended in victory for Tottenham Hotspur. The winning goal in stoppage time by the Danish international, Alan Nielsen. Tottenham Hotspur, who remarkably almost went down last season. I think it was the penultimate weekend of the season before they secured their premiership place, are back on the honours list again. The end. Watch all six Sky Sports channels on your mobile and online. Witness the most daring mission of World War II. Killian Murphy, Jamie Dornan, Anthropoid in cinemas now. Five, two, one. Should I get yours? Don't worry, I'll call you. La pendule le pic, tic, tac, tic, tic. Les oiseaux du lac, pic, pac, pic, pic. Glou, 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 font tous les tintons. Et la jolie cloche, ding ding dong, mais boum, quand notre... Hello? Hi, yeah, it's me, How, how's it going? Boum. These days we all watch differently. We've become the one episode is never enough back-to-back -back bingers. I need reinforcements. The super fast broadband gamers. And even the, oh, she's asleep. Maybe I can get away with it series cheaters. You have the power to watch your way. We have the TV and broadband to let you. What's it going to be, compadre? Meatball marinara? That's what you always have. What about chicken teriyaki? Throw in some peppers. Come on, mix it up a bit. Relax, don't let him get to you. Say it. Meatball marinara. No, steak and chorizo. Boom, you nailed it. The big steak range with the steak and chorizo and steak and bacon melts. Subway, keep discovering. A trip to the hardware store could take two hours out of your working day. At screwfix.ie, you'll find thousands of products at low trade prices and we'll deliver them directly to you. What you do with the extra two hours is your business. Screwfix.ie. From our site to yours. It's Monday, May the 26th, 2003. It's a date with destiny. And they are chasing a hugely impressive prize. One of the biggest prizes in world football. A place in the Premiership.
Blake now for Kenny Miller, and he's got Mark Kennedy with him! Oh! A storming start for Wolves! Mark Kennedy seizes the moment! It's a massive moment! It's a magic moment! It's 1-0 to Wolverhampton Wanderers! Well, you will go a long, long way to see a sweeter strike than this. When you see left-footed players strike the ball with venom and the way they get to the ball and they look so stylish. This is what Kennedy does when he gets his ball off Miller. Look at that! It's not just a stab, it's a punch! And he thumps it with that left boot! The goalkeeper's not in a bad position, but the fact is, this is driven with enormous power and the angle of it is perfect into that bottom corner. Kozluk. Compromising from Julian Lescott, Wolves Player of the Year. Oh, Colin Cameron. He used to do this for Hearts all the time and has done it for Wolves, bursting through the middle. It's Cameron and it's a vital save from Paddy Kenny. Brilliant. Brilliant play from Colin Cameron. He's got no support, so he's got to go on his own. He picks it up here. Now go on, Phil Jagielka. Make the challenge. You can't keep backing off. At some stage, you've got to come towards the ball because if you don't, I'll just shift this ball to the side, strike it to the far corner, and the keeper makes a great save. Kenny Sheffield United's player of the year. It's Kennedy's corner. It's in there. And Nathan Blake flicked it in the Wolves are hungry hungry for a place in the Premiership they lead 2-0 they are dreaming like they've never dreamt before oh they've found them wanting they've really found them wanting the experience of Paul Ince is what this goal's all about just watch him come to this position at the near post he gets that half a yard away from his marker he flicks it on towards Nathan Blake Nathan Blake just comes off the six yard and says thank you very much once I make contact with this I'm right in front of the goal it would make the goalkeeper magnificent if he said it but he's got no chance I think Neil Warnock has done successfully this season is using substitutes well we might have to do that again Newton's cross, Miller's in there it is 3-0, it's Kenny Miller, the Wolves are heading to the Premiership, surely. Well, at no time is Kenny Miller picked up. I, I'm sure Neil Warner won't believe it, but David Jones will be ecstatic, because all he does is he waltzes into position. Newton had an opportunity to cross it early. There's Miller in the middle of the box. Is anybody looking at me? Jackie Elker has a slight look, but then he leaves him and then this requires a death touch once it comes in and Miller produces that hooks it with his left foot into the top corner round page with the cross from Newton and that's superb Kozlik centre away by Lescott here's Brown and Love and ball, and it's given against Butler. Oh, it was played straight at him. It was played straight at him. There is nothing he can do, Paul Butler, to get out of the way of this ball. And that's what he looks at the referee. Just watch and love, he plays that immediately. Look, he's even trying to take the arm out of the way. It does brush his hand, but certainly he didn't mean it. Michael Brown has scored six out of six from the spot this season. Here comes Brown, and Matt Murray has saved it, and that might be definitive proof that it's just not meant to be for Sheffield United, and that it is meant to be for Wolves. Well, he can put the Beano down, Matt Murray, because he's read this even before he's kicked it. Just look at that. It's going to go to my left-hand side. I've seen you do these before. There's no way you're going to kid me. That's mine. Look at that, down and up as quick as possible, and Kava can't put the rebound in. It's all incidental, this. It doesn't matter now to Sheffield United. 
just looking for a consolation as Alisson knocks it down. Wolves are in the Premiership! Dave Jones is the man who has taken them into the big time. I'm sure their fans want to hear it again. Wolves are in the Premiership. They've been waiting a while to hear it. About time too. After 19 years away, after 19 years of hurt, the Wolves are back. Watch all six Sky Sports channels on your mobile and online. I think there may be something wrong with this war. Something hiding underneath. You're watching Sky Sports 1. Your home of football. This program is sponsored by Bet365. Where else but Hollywood? We're at the StubHub Center for Los Angeles against Orlando City SC. And what a story potentially we have here because Landon Donovan is back. The legendary MLS player, the MVP award is named after him. Donovan, the top scorer in the history of MLS, drafted back by LA on the bench here today against Kaka and his Orlando City SC side who are in good form. This is how the Western Conference table looks. LA Galaxy are down to fourth after that Colorado victory. And uh, they've cut the gap to Dallas to five points now. Real Salt Lake and LA Galaxy together on 44. In the East, Orlando are just in the playoff places. And they've got two games in hand on the team beneath them, New England. They'd be worried about DC United as well after their 2-2 draw against New York Red Bulls, and look how congested it is at the top. Five points between first and fourth. Well, we could have a real thriller here, and Orlando come here as a live threat as well after their win in Montreal. But before all of that, it is time for the national anthem.
A hugely emotional day in the USA. The flag at half-mast, it seems inappropriate to talk about team news, but the LA team has three changes from the one that drew three all against Real Salt Lake. Yellow Van Dam, Rafael Garcia and Raul Mendiola all come in. This is how they'll line up with Steven Gerrard still out with injury. Landon Donovan, as we'll see in a moment, on the bench. Dos Santos is the top scorer with 12, playing in behind Alan Gordon, who's yet to score this season. Boateng and Mendiola on either side of him. So that's the LA Galaxy starting lineup. And here's the LA Galaxy bench. All eyes on one man, the number 26. Landon Donovan back in the Galaxy squad. Robbie Keane on his way back from a hamstring injury, also on the bench. Here's the Orlando side, two changes from that wonderful 4-1 win at Montreal. Kevin Molino and Kyle Larin fully fit now after international duty. They come back in for Breck Shea and Carlos Rivas, who was man of the match in that game and is unlucky to be left out. But one of the most remarkable things about the 4-1 win in Montreal was that Orlando did it without Larin or Molino, who have been two of their outstanding performers this season. Rebas was excellent. Perez Garcia too. He, Kaka and Molino will be in behind Larry with Nocherino, who's finding some form, alongside Carrasco in behind. Slight weakness, though, potentially, in those two centre-halves, David Mateus and particularly the new man, Jose Aja. And here is the substitutes bench, Seb Hines on his way back. Rivas is there as a really strong option, and Julio Baptista too. So we're ready in the sunshine. Doesn't look the strongest LA Galaxy team this. I think Orlando, who are in good form, who've really found their mojo under Jason Christ since he replaced Adrian Heath. They will fancy this. They won on the road in Montreal. Why can't they win here in LA? Pre-match huddles. The referee is Ismail Elfath. And you'd have to feel, particularly if LA Galaxy are in front, that we will see Landon Donovan at some point. Stuart Robson, though, alongside me. It's not just about him. In fact, it's not really at all about him. It's about the starting 11 and how they perform here against Orlando. And how can LA Galaxy get in behind Orlando with Gordon up front? He's not going to run in behind them. He's good with his back to goal. He'll win balls in the air. Bartank has to be a real live wire out on the left-hand side. So Perez Garcia and Kaká to get us underway. They look so strong now with Larin and Molino back, 22 goals between them. It's going to be one of those light and shade halves of football, at least, with the angle of the stand here. Jose Aja, the Uruguayan, clears it downfield. I must say that in the pre-match warm-ups, Landon Donovan looked astonishingly casual. Strolling around, he didn't seem to go through too much of a warm-up, but he is on the bench. You're absolutely right. He stood and watched the other players. Big smile on his face, watching what was going on. Not a lot of activity from him. Let's hope if he does come on, he is ready to play. Well, they're playing through the ticker tape at the moment. Just for the time being, it's the 1978 World Cup final. Don't think Mario Kempes is out there. Low key with Bendik. Yeah, low key start from both sides. They like to play that ball forward. It's the second time they've played that long ball for Van Dam is good in the air. It's going to be a struggle for Larin. Ball to play from that sort of distance into him. Six games to go. After this for. Orlando, got a feel, if they could win this and they won, say, three more, they'd pretty much be guaranteed a top six place. There is uh, Ismail Elfath, 
five to go for the Galaxy after this. They're in fourth at the moment in the West. Should be OK, but they know that if you do fade and end up losing your home draw and having to play extra games in the playoffs, then it really won't help. They found that out last year when they faded badly. They're always looking for the team that finds form at the right time in the structure of MLS, similar to... Uh, the NFL in that regard with the setup of the season. Orlando are looking good at the moment. We just have to go back to last season and Portland Timbers were struggling to get into the playoffs. Then had that good run. Ended up winning MLS. You're quite right. This is a weak, or looks a weak, LA Galaxy side today. No De Jong, no Gerrard, no Robbie Keane. He's on the substitutes bench. Well, Landon Donovan has taken Nigel De Jong's place on the LA Galaxy roster. That's who he's replaced after De Jong's move to Galatasaray. Gerard out with injury. Keane just coming back from injury. These are key players for them. Slightly surprised to see Mike McGee on the bench. He goes with Gordon and the likes of Rafael Garcia. Making only his sixth start for LA Galaxy in... Four years at the club. Mendiola making only his second start. It's an inexperienced side. Here's Kaká, who's anything but inexperienced. One three, drawn two, lost two under Jason Kreis, Orlando. The kind of improvement that Phil Rawlins and co wanted. What a win that was after conceding in the opening minute in Montreal. Joe Bendix's nightmare from the Drogba free kick. To come back the way they did was extraordinary. Kaka and Rivas were both outstanding. do wonder as well whether the Landon Donovan uh, situation will help LA or hinder. You wonder what the other players make of it, whether the hullabaloo surrounding him helps. Well, he's been out for 20 months, suddenly comes back. And everybody's talking about him being a star player. It's going to take him a long time to get his match fitness back. Well, that's better. Little touch forward to Mendiola, but cut out well by Antonio Nocerino. Wrong pass from Mendiola. Gordon was free in the box. It just had to be whipped across that six-yard box. Gordon would have been first to it. Here comes Yellow Van Dam. He certainly gives them some uh, physical clout. Now Emma Boateng. Here's Molino. I think he's one of the most improved players in MLS this season. Always looked to be one of those flighty players who sort of drifted in and out of games, but he's been key this year. Foul by the recovering Garcia. Playing in midfield alongside Legette. And Legette has suddenly become a key player. Again, on the periphery, really, but regularly in the side now. There's Perez Garcia. Not the strongest runner, Perez Garcia, but he's uh, done well since he arrived from San Jose. Rafael Garcia and now Ashley Cole. Here's Boateng. Steris, who's established himself well in the heart of that LA backline. We talked about the players missing. Yassi Zadis as well is a really big miss for LA in forward areas. Almost a very good pass there for the on-rushing Ashley Cole. Good rotation in the wide area. Boateng just drifts. He wasn't onside, or wasn't offside when the ball was played. It was just hit too hard. A diagonal from Giovanni Dos Santos. With Gerard out and Keane out, he has become the key man for LA. There's an argument to say even with them in, he's the key man now. 
Well, he often plays out on the right-hand side. We're going to see him play in behind Gordon today. Probably his better position. Up towards Gordon. Picked up by Dos Santos right on cue, but good challenge. David Mateos uh, sweeps it away. Forward by Alston. Van Damme slides through the ticker tape to make the challenge. Alan Gordon's a good friend of uh, Landon Donovan from his previous spell here in LA. Talking this week about how much fun it is to have him around. No question, he does seem to be a popular guy. Touched inside towards Larry. Away by uh, Boateng. Well, he certainly had a good spell, didn't he? A couple of spells with Everton. Under David Moyes. To Landon Donovan. Boateng playing out on this left-hand side. He's the one with the pace. He's the one that can run with the ball. For LA Galaxy, along with Dos Santos. Described himself as an Evertonian for life. Wonder if he's told Steven Gerrard that yet. Mind you, Robbie Keane always said that he supported the team that he played for. He must have supported about ten different teams when he was a youngster. Long towards Boateng. Swung in by Ashley Cole. Here's Boateng again with a bit more space this time. Another poor cross. That lets him down on occasions. His final ball into the box. It's just that little bit of quality that LA seem to lack without the players we've spoken about in the final third. They have a great deal of honesty and commitment but the only player you feel can really unlock the opposition is Dos Santos wanting to get in behind Dos Santos was there at the near post Gordon at the far oh, I thought Gordon had to win that ball he was favorite when the ball was played good recovery challenge given away by Nocherino they need the new Nocherino Orlando not the one who's been strolling around in much of his MLS career. Here's Legette, great pass from him, Gordon surely. Well, how didn't he score? Dos Santos ran onto it, looked up and saw Gordon, and somehow LA aren't in front. Well, I'm not sure that Dos Santos did see Gordon. I think he went for goal himself and sliced it off the outside of his boot. We'll have to wait and see again. It's a lovely little run, he plays the ball, continues his run. I think he's for going for goal here. He tries to shoot, comes off the outside of his boot and ends up going to Gordon. He's only got one thing in his mind and that's scoring, but a really good challenge right at the end by Matthias. Just about did enough. Aha, the player that made the challenge. Number four, one of the two centre-halves. What a good challenge it was. Robbie Keane watching on. I'm duty bound at this point to ask if you think Gordon could have been a bit braver there. Well, I thought he could have been braver with the previous chance that he had when the cross came in from Berteng. In the air, he was first to it. Just wasn't sharp enough. And again, wasn't quite sharp enough when Dos Santos broke into the box and miscued his shot. But good from LA Galaxy. Great square one two. There's Landon Donovan. Afternoon chat on a park bench. Quiting uh, trips over, but he was doing the fouling. Two goals for him this season. The Ghanaian, he's been a useful acquisition, Emma Boateng. But Orlando, you feel, are the team here with the real sparks in forward areas. Kakar and Molino and Larin. Yet to see it, though, so far in the game. 12 minutes 
old. We've seen very little of Larin. A couple of balls played up to him in the air. He's lost those challenges. Molino had a run down the right-hand side, and Kaka, I think he's only touched the ball a couple of times. I don't think they'll mind, though, Stuart, just sitting in for a while and trying to create when they can. Nothing here to scare Orlando. You know what? It's the Galaxy have come closest. Orlando have scored seven in their last three games. They're really on a roll. There's Boateng to try and turn inside, but Alston read it well. Still not quite fit and ready to come back is Rafael Ramos, who started at right back. There is the man that's turned things around for Orlando, Jason Christ. He's wearing a safari suit today. Interesting colour scheme. Says Yves Saint Laurent. Here's Dos Santos trying to find a way through on the edge of the area. Kaká. Well, there was a foul in the first place on Kevin Molino. It's been a fairly sedate start to the game. We've really seen any control from Carrasco and Notturino in that midfield for Orlando. Very much the holding midfield players to allow the others to go and play. Kikar and Tenez Garcia, Molino, Larin. There's not Chirino. Perez Garcia and Molino just switch sides for the time being. Chasing there by Laren, put the pressure on uh, Brian Rowe. Goalkeeping is an issue for LA Galaxy. Dan Kennedy unconvincing as well. Rowe's not had a brilliant season. Having said that, Joe Bendick is prone to the odd mistake, as we saw last time. Well, he did redeem himself with a penalty save from Didier Drogba. Just haven't got going so far. The away side, the poor ball forward. Jason Christ watching on. Now Van Dam is Ashley Cole diagonal in towards Alan Gordon. Now Legette. Mendiola. Galaxy trying to warm to the task here. Looked like it bounced off a hand, and it did. Yeah, Rogers trying to get forward on that right-hand side. Cutting him field onto his left foot. Just clipped the heels of one of the Orlando players and came up and hit him on the hand. He does love to get forward, Rogers. Well, two good attacking fullbacks in Rogers and Cole, albeit <laughs> with slightly different careers behind them. Here's Dos Santos. Mendiola. There is uh, Ashley Cole. 
Good defending from Aha. Uh -huh. Wasn't a great pass from Ashley Cole. No good movement from Gordon. Ball was just in favour of the centre back who could come in and intercept. He's made a goal saving challenge already. Number four. Yeah, he's the player who had to, uh, ahead of the trip to Montreal, fly to New York to get his passport, which he didn't have with him. Ball a little bit dramatic. For Dales there, that big diagonal. It's going to be a struggle for Gordon up front by himself. Yes, the centers will try and join him. He will drift into wide areas as well. Here's Legette. Rebounds kindly here for Legette. Oh, looking inside for Dos Santos, but Alston did well to recover. Really well. Kept in though by Boateng. Carrasco did well that time to get back and defend, and he brings it clear now. Foul by it. Legette. Solid midfield player, Carrasco. Being alongside Nocherino. Didn't seem to get too far forward. Just sit in front of the centre-backs. It was that final pass. They were both offside, Gordon and Dos Santos. That went the flag by some distance. It is a weakness of Orlando, isn't it, that you don't feel they have too much drive from that midfield area, the two holders. It just feels like it's fine to have one, but well, the reason... a little bit more from Nocherino, maybe. Yeah, the reason they play with two holding midfield players is that Kaká is not going to do too much defensively as that third midfield player in there. And even though he hasn't played for 20 months, he's still going to feature a lot in this game, even though he's on the bench. Yeah, he is. Some experience there too, isn't there? Landon Donovan and Mike McGee and Robbie Keane, all former MLS MVPs. The only difference is the awards named after one of them. Kind of trumps the others. He did have a... has had a marvellous career, Landon Donovan, particularly with the national side. First chance maybe for Orlando to get forward and create for Larin. And there's the follow-up from Molino, and that is what Orlando do. Well, it all came about, the fullback Bowden getting forward down that left-hand side. Great rotation of positions. The LA Galaxy went to sleep. And Larry maybe should have scored the first time, but Molino following up. Watch out, there's that rotation of positions. He goes to sleep. Mendiola, Bodin gets to the byline, it's a really good cutback. Van Damme gets a bit lucky, it hits him, but he can't do anything about the rebound. It's a good finish with the inside of his left foot, still has a lot to do, Molino. It's the left back that makes it. Well, the left-sided they... player that scores it. Sat and they sat. Just took the sting out of LA and then they stung them at the other end. Molino into double figures for the season. And as you said, Stuart, it's worth emphasising it's a really good finish, that. It's not an easy skill, is it? Well, it's a trait of modern football, the way the fullbacks do get forward, and now the opposition fullback, or the opposite fullback, gets sucked into poor position so the fullback can break forward. Here comes Robbie Rogers talking of fullbacks breaking forward. And uh, LA have a corner, but the silence in this place when uh, Molino scored was quite something. That's going to be the in swing out from Dos Santos. 
The two big players, Gordon Van Dam, probably the main target. Steres is in there as well. Towards that near post, Van Dam will still chase. Sure, that was the area they were looking for when you've got Van Dam in the side coming in somewhere around the middle of the goal. Don't really want to play it too short. Here's he's onside when the ball was played there, Bowden. Just about the arm goes up from a couple of the LA Galaxy players, but this is a really good cutback. Good movement by Larin as well. And following up his movement, Molino with the inside of his left foot. He has to wrap his foot round it as well just to control it. But it's a good finish. Orlando then in front on LA's big day. If it carries on like this, LA will need a hero. Wonder where they'll find one of those. Forward by Perez Garcia, here's Kaká. Pass was on through the middle to Molino, but he's offside. It was a great finish. I think the pass was on to Perez Garcia, who was on, but picked out Molino. You're absolutely right. Perez Garcia was the pass. He was onside. Well, they're saying it was a pass by the defender. That's what Orlando was saying, that Kaka didn't actually play the pass. It was... Garcia coming back that played the ball through in the end. We'd have to have a closer look at that. But the fact that we would shows how hard it is for the officiating team to get right. And I think the rules say that it has to be a deliberate attempt to play the ball rather than a tackle. Kaká, but he loses out. Now Mendiola. Santos turned into Carrasco. Referee decides that's a foul. Carrasco doesn't like the decision. Neither does Aha. Looked a weak free kick given by that man there. Dos Santos actually turned into Carrasco. Is there anything wrong with that at all from... The midfield player. I think that was Carrasco's argument. I think they're aggrieved about the offside up the other end as well. Just to add insult to injury. Now then, they will know that Joe Bendick dropped one in last week from Didier Drogba's strike. Dos Santos will want to get this on target. In the end, he chips it in towards Gordon. Headed away by Laren. Laren didn't trust the goalkeeper on that occasion. He wanted to deal with it, and quite rightly so. Gordon winning the ball at the far post. I wonder if Bruce Arena has a specific plan in mind with Robbie Keane in particular and Mike McGee. You know, play Gordon, but tell him almost that he's only going to play for 60 minutes and Robbie Keane on his way back from injury will come on. Coaches do uh, sometimes do that, although those plans have to change as well. If that was the case, you'd like to see big centre forward put himself about a little bit more if he's only got 60 minutes. I think he's had two good opportunities to come his way. First one, a cross by Barting. She should have attacked. The second one when Dos Santos got through and miss kicked his strike on goal. He's the man with the problems at the moment, Bruce Arena. Yeah, problems for them in general as well. They just haven't really got going in front of goal. I know they scored three last time and two the time before that, but really shot shy. Just haven't looked the real deal this season, LA Galaxy. Losing Nigel de Jong a big blow as well. Torino took a whack there. Yeah, 
You're absolutely right. It's been disappointing from Nocherino since he's been in MLS. Outstanding in Serie A for a couple of seasons, Nocherino. You would expect just a bit more from him, although, as I said last time, we did see a little bit. He also had that spell at West Ham United on loan, didn't he? Hardly played a game. As did uh, Legette, who didn't play a game. Side there against Gordon. I'm doing Sebastian Legette his service. He, of course, played an FA Cup game. It's not in the league at West Ham. Before anyone writes in, it was an infamous game as well. Played against Nottingham Forest when Sam Allardyce put a weakened side out. Nottingham Forest winning the game by I think five goals to nil. Not sure it's a game you remember too fondly, Legette. Jet not in the running for Hammer of the Year that season. The man alongside me, a former winner of that award. Back in the uh, late 60s. I think 59-60. <laughs> Just straddle the decade. So Orlando in front here, thanks to Kevin Molino's finish. After Larin went close, Galaxy, though, have had two chances for Alan Gordon. Both could have been taken on another day. But it's fascinating to see what Jason Kreis has done with Orlando. Hasn't changed anything radically, but they defend better now. and They look a little bit more like they know what they're doing. Been a lot of talk about this player here, Larin. How well he's done over recent months. Talking to the England player, Paul Marino, who said he thinks he can go and play in the Premier League and be a really good player. And he should know. One of the great uh, holders up of a ball has ever been, Paul Mariner. Amongst many other skills. Oh, is this man in really high regard. Former assistant coach to Stevie Nicholl at New England Revolution. Threaded through for Legette. Well, it's given away and they might just pay for it. Here is Legette. Desperate trying to find Boateng, finally it reaches him. Good ball, fizzed in. This time it's Kaká who's caught in possession. I'm afraid it's been Kaká caught in possession on three or four occasions. He looks off the pace at the moment. Then in desperation, commits a foul against Ashley Cole. He's had a poor start to the game. Hardly been involved, and when he has been involved, he's been caught on the ball. Did play in midweek for 70 minutes. You wonder if things are just catching up with him a bit physically. And they need to make something happen here. In from Dos Santos. Yet again, Kaká struggling to clear, and now it's Yellow Van Dam. Orlando keep doing this on the edge of the area, they're going to be made to pay. There's Dos Santos following in. And um, such a threat in the penalty box. Not necessarily to score himself, but he'll win balls in the air, he's determined. He'll crash into defenders. Kaka's had a really poor first 31 minutes here.
here is Mendiola. Now Robbie Rogers. Here's Molino. Scorer of the game's only goal so far. Now Kaká. <laughs> can still play a bit. Here's Larin. Yeah, that was excellent play from him. That was Kaká of old. Former World Player of the Year. Yeah, Ballon d'Or in 07, Kaká. In his peak at uh, Milan, he was something else. One of the most elegant movers with a football you've ever seen. Here's Dos Santos. Oh, digs out the cross. Wateng was there, so too Gordon, but they just about scrambled it away. Goodness me, I thought for a moment that Bender could misjudge that. He got a very important hand to it in the end because Gordon made a good run. He'd come to the near post, then spun round the back. That cross was going to be right on his head. Dos Santos again. In from Mendiola. Ashley Cole wins the header. Who was that? Cross. Santos just lifting it to the far post. See how Gordon got away from his marker. It's a good enough hand in the end from the goalkeeper, Bendik. Kaká was caught there by Rafael Garcia. And there's a warning from Ismail Elfat. Never looks happy, does he, Bruce Arena? <laughs> Till after the game when they've won. You can say that again, yeah, he's... Uh, he's a tough one to read on the uh, touchline. A tug on the shirt, I think, by... Garcia on... Kaká. hit over the crossbar of Brian Rowe, not too convincingly. Bit of a waste that. Here's Van Dam. Did well to recover from a poor pass from the keeper and find Boateng. Trying to turn round, Nocherino! Equaliser from Dos Santos. The Galaxy draw level. A real sucker punch. And it's Dos Santos with his 13th of the season. Well, that was counter-attacking football at its very best. Started by Van Dam, playing the ball into the pace of Barteng. Nocherino was the player up against Barteng. He didn't want to get too tight because he thought he was going to be beaten. Just one pass. This is played down the side with great weight on it. Now Barteng against Nocherino. Nocherino backs off and backs off. And what a good pass that is for Dos Santos. She used to run onto it. It's made up a lot of ground to get there. But it's the perfect cross. We talked about Barteng not always finding the right pass, but that was brilliant from him. Well, the highest compliment you can pay him in this context is that it's an assist that Dos Santos would have been proud of. He happened to be on the end of it, though. Suddenly the goals have started to flow in Galaxy games again. 3-3 last time and already 1-1 here and here comes Gio Dos Santos. In towards Gordon, can he get there? He's offside. <laughs> Still not sure he's actually heard the whistle. Did look offside when the ball was played. He's trying to hold his line, he's trying to hold his run, and you can see he's just a fraction offside. Still missed the target. Good, didn't he? He went on for a while. Mateus. 
former Real Madrid uh, B player. Comes with uh, some pedigree, David Mateus. Here's Boateng. Now Ashley Cole. Oh, and it's turned dangerously past his own post by Nocherino. Who immediately turns and berates those around him. Really good play down that left-hand side again. Van Damme, Ashley Cole, Boateng. Good passing, and this is a good cross as well. Ashley Cole's looking for the run of Boateng. Nocherino, the holding midfield, or one of the holding midfield players, getting back into a good area. I think the Galaxy have woken up, Stuart. There's the big threat, Van Damme. Santos with the delivery. And again for Van Damme, driven across! Alan Gordon and LA Galaxy have turned it round in double quick time. Two goals in three minutes, and they lead by two goals to one. And it's the centre-back, Van Damme. Finding himself in a wide left area. What a cross this is. Whipped in with pace. They defend the first ball fairly well. Orlando get a good clearance. Barteng does well here just to keep the play going. I think he was offside, Dos Santos, when the ball was played. Just plays it round the corner. Look at this for a cross. And all he has to do is get his body in the way. Is it him that gets the touch or is it the defender? I think it is Alan Gordon that just gets his stomach onto it. Maybe even his hip. That's all he had to get onto it because the cross made the goal. Maybe he's been energised by the arrival of his mate, Landon Donovan. Now Nocherino is struggling with something muscular, I think. He's just had to make two or three very quick recovery runs. He was up against Boateng in a 1v1 just before the goal. Well, that looked to me to be a shake of the head. Well, he still doesn't look happy, does no. he, Bruce Arena? I just thought he was offside when that ball was played to him. Giovanni Dos Santos, he got away with it. Yeah, there is the change. Nocherino has to go off, so 23-year-old uh, Tony Rocha on to replace him. But here come the Galaxy again, Legette brought down. Aha, couldn't quite believe it. But Orlando are in danger of being overrun here at the end of the first half. It's been a good few minutes, hasn't it, for LA Galaxy. Suddenly playing at a good tempo, getting the ball forward, good movement in the front areas. And winning the ball back quickly. Big Joe Bendick just organising things in front of him as Dos Santos delivers! Just wide by Van Dam. There's that determination, that aerial ability. Such a leader. He may not be the captain, but he's such a leader for this side. Inspires others with his determination, energy. He's a winner. And he came mighty close there. Orlando have just switched off here. Forward by Bowden. It's been a very entertaining half and all of it on the field, even though the camera has picked out Landon Donovan on two or three occasions. Big, big news. 
both in this part of the world and in MLS in general, that he's back. Well, he's got them back into the game with that equaliser, Giovanni Dos Santos. I thought he was offside for the second goal. Good little ball he played down the side for Van Damme. Now then, so, uh -huh, caught in the face, he didn't like the challenge. Gordon that he's talking to. Gordon saying clash of heads, Aha saying elbow. No love lost between the two centre the well, centre back and the centre forward at the moment. Yeah, Baptista just mentioning one or two things to the player that's come off, not yeah. Torino. Being asked to leave the field, I think, because the trainer did come on, or the physio. Both players leaving the field. Take another look at it. Well, he does nothing wrong there. Good, absolutely nothing wrong. He's making a big deal out of that. The heart doesn't even lift his arms, Gordon. Uh -huh, his defense. I think he, well, he was caught, wasn't he, by the head? He just probably didn't know where it had come from. Mistakenly thought it was an elbow. But if you're a big, tough centre half and you like challenging for the ball in there, you expect to take a knock or two. Forward by Dos Santos to Gordon again, who goes down. He's given the penalty. Aha uh -huh, on Gordon. And LA have a chance to score a third. And at first glance, it looks harsh. People will say, never go to ground. But that was a chance. If Aha goes to ground, he gets more distance on his tackle and he wins the ball. By staying on his feet, he just allowed Gordon to nick the ball away from him, or so it seemed. Was it inside the box? No, it wasn't. It's a poor challenge from Aha. It's an even poorer call from the referee. He's a way outside the box, Stuart. And the assistant has to be there to help him as well, surely. I think it's a foul, but it's outside the box. It's also poor defending by a heart. So, big Joe Bendix saved a penalty in midweek. Orlando need him to step up again. It's Dos Santos! No heroics from Bendix this time. LA have come from a goal down, and on the stroke of half time, they lead by three goals to one. Well, it's a good penalty. Dos Santos, good composure, just sees the goalkeeper diving that little bit early and just passes it into the other corner. Another goal for the Mexican. Here's the challenge again. It's a poor challenge, it's outside the box, should be a free kick. Just waits for the goalkeeper and then wraps his foot round it. Bendik going to his right. Ball goes to his left. Chica takes back. Not sure you're a fan of the ticker tape, are you? Oh no, I love it. Forward by uh, Rocha. Is there a way back here for Orlando? Seems like a long shot at the moment, especially with Kaká not really influencing it. Perez Garcia now. Ricochets through. Was now, it? was there a shirt tug on Larin? Well, it looked to be, didn't it, from Steres, I think it was. Wasn't any complaint from Carl Laren? Not from Laren. There was from one or two of the other Orlando players when that ball ricocheted into the box. Well, into the second additional minute here. It's been a really good game. This here's Kaka. Gonna 
Garcia. I think Kaka makes the most of this. He actually backs into the recovering player. The referee saying it's happened on more than one occasion now, and that's why he's booked him. I think it is one of those cumulative ones, isn't it? Not the first time he's done that. Here's Perez Garcia. No way past Van Damme. Well, the first half brought to a close. Half in which Orlando led by a goal to nil through Kevin Molino on 20 minutes, but then three goals in the 10 minutes before half-time. That put LA firmly in charge. Dos Santos, first of all, and then Gordon from a delicious Dos Santos cross before Dos Santos finished off a penalty that was won by Gordon, although it was very unfortunate for Orlando, the challenge well outside the area. So that's the story of the half. LA look like they're getting back on track. Orlando's momentum momentarily halted. And half-time at the Stub Hub Center. It's LA Galaxy 3, Orlando City 1. This program is sponsored by Bet365. The Ryder Cup coming soon live only on Sky Sports. At Ulster Bank, we know how much finding the perfect match matters. So when it comes to your mortgage, we're ready to help with a mortgage that fits your life today and into the future. Offering the same great rates for new and existing customers. Because that's only fair. To talk about your perfect mortgage, drop into your local Ulster Bank branch or just give us a call and we'll come to you. Because helping each other is help for what matters. Spin and go from Poker Stars. Three players, one spin. And you could win up to a million dollars in just five minutes. Spin and go. Only at Poker Stars. What's it going to be, compadre? Meatball marinara? That's what you always have. What about chicken teriyaki? Throw in some peppers. Come on, mix it up a bit. Relax, don't let him get to you. Say it. Meatball marinara. No, steak and chorizo. Boom, you nailed it. The big steak range with the steak and chorizo and steak and bacon melts. Subway, keep discovering. Our spar range is growing every day, as good as the best for less. Like spar water, two liter, any two for one euro. Spar toilet tissue and household towels, only one euro each. And spar brownie and apple pie cookies, only one euro. Wherever you see the tree. Attention! Attention! Prisoner escape sublock B. All right. That explains it. Red Bull gives you wings. You know, I, I really like you, and maybe we could. I am so soft and. We could maybe mean your crispy and so When soft and crispy strikes, Cadbury Double Decker, obey your mouth. All kids under 18 can now be with VHI Healthcare for half price on all our one plans. Available until October 31st, it's the right time to switch and provide your family with all the benefits of Ireland's number one health insurer. Switch now. Call us on 1890-444444. VHI Healthcare. When you need us, we're there. Hey, now the whole house can be online with a 30-day broadband contract from Virgin Media. Call us or go to virginmedia.ie.
When great cash prizes instantly are up to half a million euro on the TV game show, surprise yourself. Pick up your winning streak scratch card in store today. Smithwick's Blonde, crafted with Polaris hops and sweet malt for a delicate flavour and smooth finish. This programme is sponsored by Bet365. And welcome back to StubHub Centre. We're on Landon Donovan Day. Just kidding. LA Galaxy lead Orlando City by three goals to one. Two for Gio Dos Santos and one in between for Alan Gordon, created by Dos Santos. Orlando led, but LA came roaring back. Plenty of highlights to talk about, Stuart Robson. Absolutely. It's a slow start to the game. This was a big, big chance for Gordon. It's a big, big chance for Dos Santos as well, but he completely miscued it here. He's looking to shoot. Comes off the outside of his boot. And a really good challenge by a heart. And then the lead for Orlando. Larin's ever blocked by Van Damme. Molino with the follow-up to make it 1-0. Is really their first attack of any sort of note down that left hand side Bowden getting forward broke the offside line lovely little cut back Van Dam gets in the way of the first one but Molino still had a lot to do see how he just wraps his foot round it just to keep control of it it's a good finish yeah he swept it in terrifically didn't he and then Boateng to tee it up Dos Santos to finish it off LA Galaxy level. And it was started by the goalkeeper. Lovely ball played down the line from Van Dam. Berteng's pace, not Torino. Actually pulls his hamstring, I think. He may have been chasing back Berteng on a couple of occasions. And Dos Santos arriving in the box, having made a 50 60 yard run to go and join in with the very, very quick Berteng. And this is what Berteng did right on this occasion, just played it into the right area. Just feels like the Galaxy are back here. Dos Santos then for Van Damme. What a cross that is. Gordon got his chest onto it. Any part of the body will do. Well, Boateng does well to keep it in play here, but is Dos Santos offside when the ball's played? Yes, he is. Coming back from an offside position. Assistant referee didn't put his flag up, so he made a mistake there. That goal really shouldn't have counted, but it's a great cross from Van Damme. And Gordon getting across the front of your defender. And the assistant doesn't get his job right on this occasion either, because that was outside the box, that challenge by Aha. Really good penalty from Dos Santos, but it shouldn't have been a penalty. There it is. It's a foul, and it's a weak challenge from Aha. I think he's got to go to ground, but it's a good penalty. Dos Santos just allowing Bendik to dive one way, and then just wraps his foot round it and puts it in the other corner. At the moment, they're in control. LA Galaxy. Yeah, this would take some throwing away, but stranger things happen. Galaxy have had nine attempts to three from Orlando City. Only the goal was Orlando's only attempt on target. And in fact, the three goals were LA's only attempts on target as well. That doesn't happen very often. Just a couple of corners in the game. 16 fouls, just a one yellow card shown to Rafael Garcia, the LA Galaxy midfielder. And the Galaxy, not surprisingly at home, are the ones who are in charge of the possession. Just about 60-40 in their favour. So LA Galaxy trailed here, but they lead now by three goals to one. Second half coming up live very, very shortly. This programme is sponsored by Bet365. Your face takes a beating from a lot of things. Your razor shouldn't be one of them. 
The Gillette Pro Shield has lubrication strips before and after the blades. Helps shield from irritation in a close, comfortable shave. Gillette. When we're busy, we tend to overlook what's really important. But with its smooth taste and rich aroma, Nescafe Gold Blend can help us notice. We might find some dinosaurs there. Can I come too? Sounds good. Do you believe in the Blair Witch? Blair Witch. Spin and go from Poker Stars. Three players, one spin. And you could win up to a million dollars in just five minutes. Spin and go. Only at Poker Stars. Tesco, we're not just big. We're big on the things that matter to you, like giving back to your community. So far, our community fund has donated nearly 2 million euro and helped over 5,000 local causes. That's over 5,000 ways we're proud to be making a difference. Tesco, every little helps. If reading, writing or working with numbers is holding you back, free text the word LEARN to 50050. This free and confidential service is supported by Unpost. Switch from oil to Calor Central Heating today and we'll give you a free brand new boiler along with our 12-month gas price freeze promise. Call us now or visit calorgas.ie and if you switch by the end of September, we'll give you an additional €250 Euro credit on your account. Calor, now you can. A trip to the hardware store could take two hours out of your working day. At Screwfix.ie, you'll find thousands of products at low trade prices and we'll deliver them directly to you. What you do with the extra two hours is your business. Screwfix.ie. From our site to yours. Witness the scariest sequel of all time. Your body will ache with fear. Five stars. Blair Witch. In cinema, September 15. These days, we all watch differently. We've become the one episode is never enough back to back bingers. I need reinforcements. The super fast broadband gamers. And even the, oh, she's asleep. Maybe I can get away with it series cheaters. You have the power to watch your way. We have the TV and broadband to let you. In life, you cannot always choose what you do. But you can always choose who you are. We are the sappers. With every brace and every cufflink, we say, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. 20 years of South Park, baby, 20 seasons down. 20 years of adventures in this small mountain town. 20 years of cup and candy stand at Kyle's Gold. It's time for Brownie South Park with 20 years old. You may respect my daughter. Oh my God, they killed Kitty. They took her down. Hello there, children. Squeeze us, I'm going home. Brand new South Park starts Friday at 10 on Comedy Central. This program is sponsored by Bet365. And welcome back to StubHub Center in uh, California. It's LA Galaxy 3. Orlando City SC won at halftime. 
Orlando led, and since then, Galaxy have taken over. One of the big questions in the second half is, are we going to see Landon Donovan on as a substitute? This would be perfect if they could extend it and make the game safe. But uh, that's up to Bruce Arena. But more pressingly, in terms of the game, Stuart, can you see a way back for Orlando here? Well, not with the way they played in the first half. We didn't see enough of Kaka as the number 10. He lost the ball on too many occasions. We didn't see enough of Larin. Good goal by Molino, but Larin wasn't able to get away from the two centre-halves. The service up to him wasn't particularly good. It means that Carrasco and Rocha in that midfield have to make sure they get a, a foothold in that midfield to start to get the ball into the front areas with a bit more quality. Yeah, Kaká needs to inspire them here, and he's inspired them so many times so far in this period in Orlando. So many of the players have spoken about the influence that he has off the field in the dressing room. Can he produce it now? Orlando, remember, right on the red line in terms of the playoff places before this weekend. They don't want to throw too many points away. Home game against Columbus Crew next time. And away games against DC United and Toronto. For Montreal, Philadelphia and DC United again. Two of those last ones at home. It's going to be tight for Orlando and Jason Christ. LA not guaranteed a playoff spot, but feel that they should be okay. They've still got Dallas to play twice, though, home and away. These peculiarities of the fixture list. Dallas in that final game would hope to be crowned as supporters' shield winners, but a lot can still happen. It has been a, a topsy turvy season so far. It's a very hard league to predict, MLS. It makes it all the more fun. You're absolutely right. Very few teams run away and have a great record. Very even league or competition. Yeah, there's something fantastically refreshing about starting a season and not really being able to narrow it down too much at all in terms of who's going to win the league. I mean, I know the, the playoff system kind of lends itself towards that, but even the supporters' shield isn't the easiest to predict. Here's Molino as Orlando looked to launch a fight back. Find its way through to Kaká. Molino went down. It was a pretty flamboyant dive, I think. Yeah, almost a very good return pass by Gaka. There's a chance of a counter-attack. That's got to be a yellow card. Has to be, doesn't it, for Rocha? Just for a moment, they were outnumbering Orlando. Were LA Galaxy on the counter. Rocha took one for the team, as they say. Thoughtful man, Jason Christ. Trying to think his way out of this problem. Here's Russia. Cleared by Rowe. Now, uh -huh, who uh, was unlucky to concede that penalty unlucky in the sense the foul was outside the area it was still a foul and a pretty silly one at that and he should have got to the ball first lack of athleticism a lack of judgment if he goes to ground and slides in he'll always have got to the ball before Gordon Gordon knew that as soon as he stayed on his feet he could just toe poke it past him and waited for the contact although for all that it was still outside the box outside the area here's Bowden Now Kaká. Those intricate passes not quite coming off, and in a way it's playing into LA Galaxy's hands, and here comes Leggett. Gordon wanted it played. You would say that this 
wait and see what happens here as Lejeune finds Gordon, who's offside. You would say that the cricket score means that we're likely to see Landon Donovan at some point, but his attitude beforehand and indeed on the bench has looked so relaxed and um, not really stretching and warming up before the game, unless he did it inside or where we didn't see, but I think you'd be surprised if we saw him. And the players were doing their sort of final warm-ups. Donovan was out there not even wearing any socks. I think he was just enjoying the occasion, but it looks as though we're going to see, or may see, Robbie Keane. Just had a little warm-up. Maybe not time for him just yet. Here's Kaká. Now Perez Garcia. Falls for Molino. Blocked by Steris. Well, Molino nearly nicked that back from Rogers, and then he fouls him. Trinidad and Tobago International. Didn't play in Montreal because he'd been away with TNT. Dos Santos, by the way, has gone above Larin in the uh, goal scorer standings today. 14 plays 13. 17. The lead at the moment. Once again, Van Dam trying to stick it in behind the fullback. Alston for the run of Bertang. He can be such a threat with that pace, the left sided player for LA Galaxy. He's used it to good effect on one or two occasions. And notably for the opening goal. Given away by Larrett. Now Legette. He's probably been the dominant central midfield player as yet in this game so far. There's Van Damme. Now Raul Mendiola. Just to curve the cross in deep. Alston, though, with a header. Intercepted well by Garcia. He had to get that challenge right, but he hasn't got that one at heart. Here's Mendiola. And Dos Santos, who is on a hat-trick. Threaded in for Gordon, but touch let him down. Well, the cross looked as though it was going to be cleared by Matthias, who completely missed it. I don't think he was ready for it, Gordon. Started this second half any better than they finished the first. Orlando. Here's Mateos. Touched on by Mendiola. That cross again, just couldn't get his touch right. A good view of it, wasn't it? The aerial view. She showed the cross to be much better than I thought it was. Really, Gordon should have done better. It wasn't misread by Matthias at all, the ball was in behind him. Forward by Garcia. Waywardly so. The tempo and the fizz just gone out of the game for the time being. I'm sure the introduction of Robbie Keane would just uh, add that little twist. 
Well, at the moment, it's LA Galaxy that don't need to have that little bit of fizz. It's Orlando that have to make something happen. 3-1 down, they haven't played particularly well. Haven't seen anything of their star players apart from the goal by Molino, which was a very good finish. There he's played it round the corner, but Steres gets in before Larin. Certainly like to see Rivas after his performance the other night. Perez Garcia just hauled back there. Well, it should be a yellow card for Ashley Cole. Yeah, absolutely, if there's any consistency. He sent off twice uh, this season for LA Galaxy, Ashley Cole. He was trodden on there, Perez Garcia. He's got the yellow card. Now he's got to be careful. This is a game where he got sent off for two yellow cards within the space of about 30 seconds. Here was that challenge in midfield. He knew that Perez Garcia had got away from him. Counter attack was on. Yeah, it was a pullback. It was one of those that has to be automatic, really. Touch of a shirt, tug about it as well. Didn't stop Ashley Cole, though, from saying it was my first one to the referee and looking surprised. Henry Winter, esteemed British football journalist, wrote a really nice piece about Ashley Cole last week, almost saying he's the, the forgotten legend of... English football, as we see uh, Mendiola, the youngster. Because of the odd comment or two he's made over the years, he's not held in the same high regard as a Gerrard or a Lampard, but Henry's point is he ought to be. Very valid point as well. Here's Molino. Terrific ball in, but as it curved away from Rowe, there was no one on the end of it. Well, Henry Rinter's absolutely right. You were picking a World Eleven, maybe seven, eight years ago. I think Ashley Cole may have got in at left back. Probably one of the only English players that would have got into the team. Mendiola has been out on the right-hand side. Had a decent game. Wants to cut back onto his left foot and play balls into the box and get crosses in. Here goes Rogers. Always know that Boateng's going to get there. He's so quick, and here he comes. They have a corner. On that occasion, he didn't quite move the ball far enough. He starts going at Alston and tries to take his touch to the side so he can whip the cross in, but he didn't take it far enough. So an easy block in the end for the fullback. But well played, Robbie Rogers. So it's Dos Santos to take the corner. Two goals for him so far. Up towards the penalty spot, Steris was there. Well, you mentioned it earlier, been a really good season for Steris. We are going to see Robbie Keane. Probably at the expense of uh, Gordon. Gordon will be withdrawn in just a moment. We approach the final half hour. If LA continue to have the game won this comfortably, all eyes will turn to one person down on the LA bench. Serena said of him this week, Landon Donovan, that at his worst, he's not going to be a liability. At his best, he's going to be an asset. It strikes me as the most ringing endorsement. I was say, I'm not sure that, yeah. that was uh, saying he's going to play too many games. Now you can see where he's coming from. I just thought it would be uh, an interesting thing to say if it was a, a new unknown signing. Why have you signed him? Well, at his worst, he's not going to be a liability. 
exactly how you'd like to be described as a player. Well, he won't be a liability. Here's Dos Santos. Four against two if they do it right. Dos Santos going for the hat-trick. Dos Santos down. Mateos with the challenge. This time he gives the free kick correctly. Well, the jet is furious. There was a four on two there. Maybe a five on three. Big overload. Dos Santos tried to go himself. Lejet had made a really good run. The ball wasn't played to him. That's Mateus out of next week's game against Columbus Crew. It was Lejet that won the ball. Look at Lejet now on the right hand side. He's waiting, he's waiting. He wants the ball played now. Doesn't come. He can't believe it. And Mateus gets the chance to bring down Dos Santos. And maybe stop the goal. It'd be a big miss next week. Here comes uh, Robbie Keane to take over the captain's armband. But Alan Gordon got a goal, did his job for Bruce Arena as we enter the final half hour. It's been a frustrating season for Robbie Keane. Who is a real legend of uh, this club? Cole's there, Dos Santos is there, it's Cole! So close to a second goal of the season. Well, I can't remember actually Cole scoring too many goals from free kicks. It's actually a very good one. Just uses the inside of his left foot to get it up and over the wall. Carl Larin is being replaced. Carlos Rivas, who set them alight in Montreal, will have to do something similar here. I have to say, Larin looked very lethargic today. Didn't play at all well. Wasn't able to get the best, better of Steris and Van Dam. It's a big call from the manager. Absolutely, with half an hour left. But, but Rebash was a bit unlucky not to start in the first place, not in Laren's place, but to get in the side. Scored a terrific goal in Montreal. The fourth to round it off. Here's Kaká. Now Molino. Look at this, Van Damme to bring it away, and he's on the charge. Yellow Van Damme fancies going all the way himself, but it's Boateng instead, and Boateng goes down, but nothing doing. And there you've just seen why the crowd love Van Damme. He's an inspiration. Won the ball, charging forward, played it with the outside of his left boot, carried his run forward. Been a magnificent signing for Bruce Arena this season. So, uh, Rivas looking for Molino. Nice bit of pace, just inject something. Here is Landon Donovan. Now, is that the warmer for a man who's going to? feature here tonight listen to the crowd responding to it that's what the roars for As Orlando look for a way back into the game Perez Garcia back where we started given away, should have hit it first time and Dos Santos looks to pick the pass for Keane good defending by Alston and as always Robbie Keane going absolutely mad that the ball wasn't played to him that little bit earlier still chuntering away and shaking his head I'm surprised, surprised other players put up with it half the time Of it is for the crowd 
just to let everybody know he's annoyed that the ball didn't come to him. There's Rocha and Molino. Ball in from Bowden. Created uh, Orlando's opening goal, or indeed their only goal. Carrasco. Good ball in behind. What about the service from Alston? Well, it was so awkward. Just couldn't get the right contact on it, Molina. Could he have gone with his head there? The diving header may just have been the right decision. Decided to try and go with the outside of his right boot. Almost impossible to get that back on target or get it back into the danger area. Just signs of a bit of a comeback here from Orlando. One or two good opportunities, one or two good runs. Started to link up their passing. And all the while, Landon Donovan continues to warm up. I wonder how fit he is. Challenge from Van Dam again. The crowd rise to him. Carrasco. There's Kaká. Now Perez Garcia. Molina. Russia. Pretty unconvincing. 20 months out. How fit were you 20 months after you retired, Stuart? It, it's going to take a while, isn't it? It will take him quite a while. I imagine to get back to match fitness, he is of a good age. Looks in good shape. But I think it was a massive surprise to everybody when he did retire. Wanted a sabbatical. How many footballers actually say they want a sabbatical and come back and start playing again? I think that upset one or two people in America. Well, he has talked publicly in honesty about issues with his mental health, and uh, that needs to be respected. Maybe felt he needed uh, some breathing space. See what an impact he can make on uh, the galaxy. At much change, Galaxy. A fellow called Gerard in the midfield. Out injured today. A new midfield partner in Russia, Carrasco. Still hasn't been able to influence the game. It's been a disappointing performance so far from Jason Kreis's team. Is Kaká now Perez Garcia? He goes Molino. They have been the late goal kings of MLS this season, Orlando. So don't write them off yet. Curiously listless display from Kaká. You know, trying to find Rivas. Rivas does offer something different, certainly. The heart with the challenge. Nudge on Robbie Keane. He does like to ref the game himself. Certainly likes a moan when he's on the pitch. It's credit to Garcia in the LA Galaxy midfield that he looks very much like no Fion the way he's played today. 
Four towards Rivas. Forward it goes again to Dos Santos. Robbie Keane to make it four. Three points going to LA. No question about that now. And the substitute, Robbie Keane, another assist from Dos Santos. And LA are out of sight. Well, Robbie Keane turns to the fans. The person he should be turning around to is Dos Santos. Because what a good little pass it was. A couple of excellent passes in that move. Cut Orlando open really easily here. Here's the one-two to start with, Leget. And Mendiola. There's the pass that really created it, and that's an even better one from Dos Santos. Well, he saw Robbie Keane just turned and pointed at Leget and said, great ball. And he was just behind Dos Santos when the ball was played. 2v1 against the goalkeeper. And Dos Santos did it brilliantly. 4-1 winners in Canada in midweek. 4-1 behind here, Orlando. Could yet get worse. To think they led. It's funny, isn't it, that the same pattern as that Montreal game. The home side, or rather, one side led, 1-0, and then found themselves 4-1 down. There's that pass again. Poor defending by the two centre-backs, the goalkeeper. Made it fairly easy for De Santos in the end just to poke it past him. Mahar has given up defending, he just stood and watched. Two players run beyond him. Offside is De Santos now. Now they're 4-1 up. Crowd is starting to ask for Landon Donovan. And that looks to me like a man who's preparing to come on. Perfect scenario, really, to introduce him. As long as Orlando don't make it 4 all. Here's Molino. Now Keane. Here's Russia. Kaká. Now Robbie Keane, look at Dos Santos getting forward. Keane had a look, but he'd already run offside by then. Still didn't hold his run, Dos Santos. Well, maybe one or two players could throw their arms up at Robbie Keane there. Kaka to be withdrawn, not been his day at all. Breck Shea. He was uh, on a yellow card ahead of that Columbus game, so interesting introduction. Nice plat there, uh, intricately done for Breck Shea, which delights pros from Stewart's generation, I know. Yes. There weren't too many plats and Alice bands around when you played. Got to say, it didn't last in their hair very long if they did wear one. No Alice Band for that man there. <laughs> what a good performance Van Dam has put in once again. The reception he's getting. He's a real inspiration, isn't he? 
It's a great ovation. And AJ De La Gaza comes on to replace him. He's another very popular player. Well, there's no flag here, and Robbie Keane can bear down on goal again, looking for number two. Checked inside, but it was too easy to read. Got to hit his shot with his right foot. Russia. Molino. Going to get a yellow card, I think, for Mendiola for having a go at the referee for stopping the game here. Final 15 minutes. <laughs> He's brave, isn't he, Mendiola? Needs a step ladder to confront Jose Aha, but he was still uh, prodding his finger into his chest. Well, There's almost a smile from Bruce Arena there. That's what the yellow card's for. Mendiola on Perez Garcia. Well, the ball was there to be won. He caught Perez Garcia. I was going to say it was a crunching tackle. He's earned his rest as that man yeah. there, Van Damme. Good day's work from Yellow Van Dam. Let's just hope there's not too big a problem. It's just a really nice put across that left knee of his. He'd come into this game with a what was described as a sprained knee. Well, yeah, the ostensible news about it was that he wasn't available. I think we are going to see him, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Yellow Van Dam is right up there with the player of the year at uh, LA. I know Dos Santos will have something to say about that, but the fans player of the year. Long way still to go, I guess, but he'll have a chance. It seems a long time ago that Bowden was racing down that left-hand side to Provide the cross for Larin to have his first shot blocked. There's Shea. Molino put in Orlando in front. It's really been one-way traffic since then. Matias, the centre-half, is up there. Probably the most dangerous player in the air. From Rivas, and Mateus is going to be a throw this time to Orlando. Proving not to be that dangerous up against Ashley Cole there. Ashley Cole winning the header. Mateus should have got that ball back into the penalty area. Perez Garcia with a chance to nod it back. But I think Orlando know for all their penchant for late goals that the game is up here. Well, their inspirational player, Kaka, didn't play at all well. You can see Larin at his best. Came out second best against Steres and Van Dam. Molino scored the goal, but we haven't seen too much from him elsewhere in the game. There's Breck Shea! Terrific save by Rowe, because that was travelling and moving. What a strike that was from Breck Shea. Hit that perfectly. Just gets it out of his feet. 
bending in the air, it's dipping and swerving away from the goalkeeper. He's going one way, just sticks up that right hand. That was some save, wasn't it? Particularly if the sun's in his eyes, I'm not quite sure what the angle is for him. Perez Garcia with the corner. This time it was Rivas who tried to crunch it towards goal. Still waiting for the call. Oh, careful about your reaction, Ashley. He's already been booked. In the Premier League in England this season, he's off with well, that reaction. I've already seen the referee give some yellow cards for things that weren't that serious, so he's got to be careful, as you quite rightly said, Ashley Cole. He's been named to lose his head on... He's still having a go here. Especially when you're 4-1 up. There's no need to talk yourself into trouble. Ten minutes left at the stub hub. Out to Bowden. Lovely ball curved in and it falls kindly for Breccia. It's another excellent save. Surely now, but onto the crossbar and away from Tony Rocha. Well, when this first cross comes in, I think Ashley Cole loses it in the sun. Well, he reacted there. Well, Alan Gordon's leading the cheers down on the bench. Here comes the cross. Bowden again getting forward. Ashley Cole goes to head it and just ducks under the out of the way of it. And a good save again from Rowe with his foot, but Russia should really score. Not just their greatest ever player. MLS is two. Mendiola's going to come off. But Landon Donovan, 20 months after he made his last appearance, 20 months after he took his sabbatical, is now going to come back for LA Galaxy. Six-time MLS Cup winner. Scored more MLS goals than anyone else. More assists than anyone else. They came calling. And here comes Landon. They're on their feet for him. It may just be a peripheral role. It may yet be a key role. But there's a real feel-good factor around LA Galaxy with Donovan back at the club. Knowing the way his scripts tend to go, who knows if he won't get the fifth. Greg Shea. Perez Garcia still pushing here to their credit, Orlando. Yeah, Breck Shea's done well since he's been on. And on that right-hand side. The problem with Landon Donovan coming back to LA Galaxy, the focus is on him rather than the team, as we've seen from the director on too many occasions. work in a good way if he becomes the, the lightning rod for the rest of the team. 
takes the pressure off them. I think it might also annoy one or two of the other players. The likes of Ashley Cole and players that have really put their work rate in that somebody takes 20 months off, comes straight back in. Gets the sort of reception that he's got. Yes, he's been a great player for LA Galaxy and for the USA. Instead of the focus being on the team, it's now on one player. There's little talent. Molino trying to take it quickly. Gets another chance. That was a little bit farcical. The wonderful save that Brian Rowe made from Brexhay. Having another look at that one <laughs> was curving away from him. Might be called into action again here. Perez Garcia. Well, Robbie Keane read it well, but then didn't have the pace to follow it up. You're absolutely right. Really well read by Robbie Keane. It's a rehearse move. He'll try and race everybody or run everybody into the six yard box, leave the player on the edge of the box. Robbie Keane read it beautifully. It does seem surreal to have him back, doesn't it? So firmly established in your mind as an ex player, done some punditry work, and as I've already mentioned, that MVP award is named after him. have been involved in coaching with the uh, US youth setup. The time felt right, there was a space on the roster. He and Bruce Arena spoke on the phone and here he is. Now Bowden, it would be one heck of a story if Landon Donovan could inspire LA to a sixth MLS Cup to his seventh. In from Molino. It's good that Steven Gerrard isn't in the team today because I take your point completely about his exposure, Landon Donovan, and you wonder what Gerrard would make of it. To wait and see what he contributes to the side as well. Here goes Carrasco. Up goes Molino. Just about did enough at the far post there, Robbie Rogers. It's a hand from his goalkeeper in his centre half. Big diagonal cross. Molina trying to get it in a around the back of him. Robbie Rogers, good defending at the far post. It's been a good battle between those two players. Landon Cam. Decent game in midfield, Garcia. Now Carrasco. And they're looking to break here with Boateng. See what damage he can do down the right-hand side. He was just checked there. By Mateus, who's already been booked. Just looks as though he overran the ball to start with. Berteng invited the challenge to come in. I think Mateus tries not to go with his leg in the end. 
I think the referee's probably made the right decision not to book him and send him off. It shouldn't, but the scoreline maybe has something to do with it as well. He's already suspended for the next game. There'll only be a couple of minutes added on at the end of this. In the fading sunshine, at least inside the stadium. It's been a good performance by LA Galaxy, having gone behind fairly early on. Bartang did well down the left-hand side in the first half. We saw Van Dam dominate Larin. He wasn't able to really influence the game. We've seen some good play from Dos Santos in the number 10 position. That's where he's at his best rather than playing out wide. And it's been a rather lacklustre performance from Orlando. seen enough of Landon Donovan to really know about his fitness or his form or anything like that. It's just been a reintroduction here. Now Shea. It was Landon Donovan that gave the ball away badly there. Looks like he's going to play out on the left-hand side. Well... It's a risk worth taking for Bruce Arena. Doesn't have to play every game or anything like that. I'm sure he won't. But when you have a gap on the uh, squad list, it's useful to fill it. And if your club's greatest ever player is prepared to do so, then he can take a risk on his fitness, I guess. A lot of his ability was about his energy and his pace, Landon Donovan. I'd say he's a player that's got great trickery or vision. He's a player that was a box-to-box -box runner. Good awareness of how to make his runs. If he's lost that little bit of pace, he's lost that energy, I'm not sure how influential he'll be. Yeah, he never... Struck you as one who could sort of develop as he got older and sit in the middle of the midfield or anything like that. There's Perez Garcia. Molino, again, he nearly threads it through. Shea. Orlando really looking for momentum. They'll take it to their next game against Columbus. Can they take a goal there? They might. It's Shea! He's had two attempts, and the third flies in. His second goal in two games. It won't matter in terms of where the points go, but it does give Orlando that little bit of momentum. And it was a sweet, sweet strike from Breck Shea. It certainly was. We've already seen him hit two really good strikes with his left foot. Rowe got a hand to it, but that's the technique that Breck Shea's got. Really good strike on him. And that will be the last kick of the game. Breck Shea with a consolation that won't be much consolation. Landon Donovan with a tiny cameo at the end of the game. Looked a little bit exhausted as well. Molino gave Orlando the lead. And then Dos Santos and Gordon. Dos Santos from the spot made it 3-1 at halftime. They managed to...